In this clip, I will be unboxing and reviewing the De La Rowney Simply Opaque Watercolour Gouache Set. I will create a full colour swatch chart, then I will create a painting of a gingerbread house to showcase most of the colours in the set of 24 paints. So before I start the review, I should mention that I bought these paints last Sunday at my local B&M bargain store. I wasn't expecting to buy them, I have been looking for a set of gouache paints for a while and these were only £6 so I thought well I have to try these out, even if they don't work out then they've only cost me £6. I've just visited their website to see if you can get them mail order and I've noticed that they've come down even further, they're now only £5 for the 24 which is incredible. and you can't buy them online unfortunately you have to go to the store which for those in the UK shouldn't be too much of an issue but I can't imagine or I don't know that there are B&M stores internationally so if you can't get them from a B&M store internationally I've put in the description below a link to these paints on Amazon. Luckily on the back of the packaging there is a description of the paints in nine languages. I will read the English. It says, Simply opaque watercolours, also called gouache, are a perfect starting point for artists looking to experiment with gouache. These opaque colours can be used straight from the tube and have excellent covering power. Contents may vary. Contains a biocidal product, BIT. May produce an allergic reaction. Warning. Hazardous respirable droplets may be formed when sprayed. Do not spray or mist. Before we start the fun part of the colour swatching, I want to talk briefly about the actual opening of the paints. These paints arrive with a metal seal at the top, so you need to ensure that you open them carefully. I started by opening them with a metal skewer um, because I felt this was the safest way to open them. However, once I'd opened a couple of them, I found that the skewer actually went down to the bottom of it really easily and actually pierced one of the paints. So just find a really short metal point to open your paints. It could even be something like a compass because then that won't penetrate the whole of the paint tube. It just needs to be something like a point that will go through the top of the thin metal casing. So I started in the order that the paints were laid out because they seem to be laid out in a very logical place and I found that the coverage of the paints was really good, they weren't too watery and I laid them all out in exactly the same way. I found that the stronger colours, the warm tones were quite vibrant and then when I got to the crimson colour I found that some of them were a little bit watery but once I layered them up a couple of times they weren't too bad. Because these are the colours that have more pigments in them, I was expecting to see a noticeable line where the colours were and for them to be more watery, but they weren't actually that bad. I was in particularly impressed with the opaque qualities of the yellow ochre and the brown, and when they dried you wouldn't know that they were actually a gouache paint, you would think they were acrylic. I was really impressed with the opaque qualities of this paint. So I'm now going to move on to demonstration of using the paints in a piece of work and I'm going to start by adding some masking fluid to the gingerbread house. Because I've never used masking fluid with the gouache before, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I'm just adding it anyway because this is a very detailed image. I did think very carefully about what image I should choose and I tried to find an image that had a wide variety of colours so I thought that this would be perfect. And at the time of painting this, it's Christmas season, so this is ideal. So for the background, I have mixed quite a lot of water into this colour. I've mixed the blue with the black because I wanted to have quite a moody feel to the sky. And there is quite a considerable amount of water in it because that's the way that I paint my skies with watercolours. I will save using just the plain 
opaque watercolour or gouache for the foreground but for the sky I wanted it to be quite watered down and I'm now adding the trees with less water and I'm just spraying some water on top to diffuse those qualities and soften it up a bit so with this area here on the foreground on the snow I'm just adding literally some water from the pot and if you want to see this painting in more detail there will be a another clip in the future maybe at the end of this week so now when I'm adding paint to the gingerbread house this is just directly from the tube but I've mixed it beforehand so I've mixed a variety of tones with the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre I've mixed a variety of tones throughout for the different tonal values As you can see when I'm applying the colour of the sweets or candies the colours are really vibrant so the reds and the yellows and later when I add the greens they are really vibrant now I should say that these colours the yellows and the, the lilac and the blue I have mixed these because they're pastel colours and there weren't pastel colours there so these are a mix that I have made but even so they are still really vibrant I'm so impressed with the vibrancy of these paints when you consider that these cost me six pounds and they're now five pounds that is just so incredible that the paints are this quality for that amount of money so finally to create a snowfall effect I've added some watered down white gouache I normally do this with Winsor & Newton on my paintings but this has worked equally well if you would like to learn more about watercolours, why not watch the playlist at the top? And if you would like to see more of my essential reviews, why not check out the playlist below?